Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, students, and distinguished guests. Welcome to our celebration. Today we recognize the 11th hour of the 11th day, although this is just the 10th of November, 11th of tomorrow, of the 11th month to honor all who serve, including our very own veterans, right here in Marion County. To these veterans with us today, including those who are disabled, we say thank you, and that is in all capital letters and underscore. We are honored to have you among us for this special occasion. We are so excited to have upwards of a thousand students with us here this morning. I think it's more like 2,000. And we have a marvelous program this morning for you. This is the 17th year in a row Marion County Public Schools has presented this ceremony featuring students for nearly every part of the program. You will hear why students in Marion County Public Schools attend school on that Wednesday. You will learn how some of them go beyond the norm to recognize the sacrifices made for all of us. And you will enjoy the talents they have in many different forms, all honoring those who have and continue to protect our country and preserve our freedoms. Thousands of veterans call our communities home, and we are blessed to have them right here in Marion County. For many of our students, they are connected with the armed forces because of these veterans who are family people who have served or who are, who are serving today, including moms and dads, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, grandmas, grandpas, cousins, and other relatives. Now when Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner over 200 years ago, he called America the land of the free and the home of the brave. These words resound true today as ever. We can never fully repay our debt of gratitude to more than 1.3 million American service members who died in battle, or the 1.5 million who were wounded. We can, however, as a nation of over 333 million people, recognize and thank over 16 million veterans still living today, including 1.5 million right here in our great state of Florida. These words are inscribed on the Korean War Memorial in Washington, D.C., and I quote, Our nation honors her sons and daughters who answered the call to defend the country they never knew and the people they never met, end quote. These words apply equally to many of our World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Persian Gulf War, and the Global War on Terrorism. And they apply to today's active duty service members, tomorrow's veterans, who are helping maintain peace throughout the world. Currently, nearly 1.4 million men and women serve our country around the world in the United States Armed Forces, and another 1 million serve in the seven reserve components. Today, it is our privilege as a school district to say thank you to all of America's veterans. To let you know we appreciate you for your service and honor you for your sacrifice. The price of freedom is high. We cannot and will not forget those willing to pay it. Today we celebrate America's veterans for keeping our country, the land of the free, and the home of the brave. To start us off this morning, please welcome someone who values our military from personal experience, our very own superintendent of schools, Dr. Diane Gump. Plumbers, paraprofessionals, among many other 
See them the way we help inspire, inspire and lead our students to succeed in so many ways each and every day, day both, both inside and outside of class. class. I am, I am truly, truly proud of them of their dedicated, dedicated service to our country and to our school and our students. Like, like our school district, district, my family, family also has a rich history of military service. My 85-year-old father-in-law, retired Navy Captain Wayne Gullett, was a pilot rally served for 26 years, primarily in anti-submarine warfare. In Vietnam, he served above the aircraft carrier USS Coral Sea and later served as executive officer of the NAS Jacksonville and the commanding officer of the NAS Brunswick Wing. Like as we enjoy this day, day and reflect on the hard work that has brought us to this point, point in time, may we always remember those who sacrificed their lives for our country. Our country. Our country. So, so much in some day all, all for each and every one of us to be able to enjoy the freedom and the best of country in the world. world. Our, our country, 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 I am honored, blessed, and proud to serve as superintendent. Thank you for joining us today so we can thank our veterans. Enjoy it. Thank you, Dr. Hall. The next, the next element, element of our presentation this morning involves a JROTC cadet representing each of our traditional public high schools here in Marion County. County. This, this combined color guard is the first of its kind for our annual Veterans Day ceremony. Leading that color guard is Specialist Sebastian Bertbenin with the Florida Army National Guard. Specialist Bertbenin is a graduate of Danella High School, class of 2022. Introducing our color guard this morning is Casey Farrell, a Navy veteran and teacher at Marion Oaks Elementary School. Will everyone, everyone please, please rise, rise for the presentation of our colors this morning? JROTC commanders, please bring your units to attention. To attention. As a pledge of loyalty to the United States of America, 31 words affirm the values and freedom our flag represents. The Pledge of Allegiance was originally composed by Francis Bellamy in 1892. It was supposed to be quick and to the point because Bellamy decided to be stated in 15 seconds. Over the years, the pledge has been modified four times, most recently in 1954, adding the words, under God. Leading us this morning in our Pledge of Allegiance are Ashanti Crooks and Skyline Nichols from Hillcrest School. captured a Washington, D.C. lawyer, lawyer and poet near Baltimore. That, that night, this attorney watched as Baltimore, Baltimore suffered bombing by a British fleet just offshore. 
Although the rain obscured a nearby fort during that night, at daybreak, Francis Scott Key could see the American flag still flying from Fort McKinley. The fort survived the British attack, and Key drafted the words of a poem on an envelope and was released a short time later and went to shore with other detainees. The British fleet withdrew, and Key finished his poem and made a legible copy in a local hotel the next day. This young attorney showed the poem to relatives who immediately had it printed and distributed throughout the city on a handbill called The Defense of Fort McKinley. Within a couple of weeks, Baltimore newspapers published the poem and it gained instant popularity and was renamed the Star Spangled Banner. When sung, the anthem has four verses, each ending with the line, or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Performing an a cappella version of our national anthem this morning, are the Canto Cats from Forest High School under the direction of Miss Jessica Mongeri. We ask, we ask you to please, please remain standing, standing for our invocation delivered by Pastor Danny McCullough, the uncle of Army, Army Specialist, Specialist Robert E. Blair, Blair whom you will learn more, more about later in this, this morning's prayer. Good morning. Good morning. As a Gold Star family member, it is an honor to be here. On behalf of Alan and Karen Blair from Montana, Florida, it's my privilege to honor the veteran. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for every veteran, past and present. We thank you for what they mean to this nation. We thank you for the freedom that we all celebrate through the soldiers who have fought and died for this freedom. I ask that this spirit would be upon all veterans. I ask that you would always keep your hands upon them as they bless this nation. Bless this service now as we honor and we lift up the courage of each and every soul. And we give you praise today for the number one soldier in the world, was Jesus Christ, who gave his life for all freedom, whom the Son has set free, will be free indeed. I bless every veteran 
In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. You may be seated. Coming forward at this time is the Vanguard High School JRPC drill team. That is the Junior Reserve Officers Training Board. They will demonstrate an armed regulation performance of military mannerisms with skill and precision. Students, you too can aspire to be part of groups just like this one later in your life. And the commitment is strong and starts early as you will see. Happy Veterans Day!
Can we again thank the Vanguard High School Chair for that? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Shady Hill Elementary School's Harmony Musical Group is under the direction of Sandra Collins, known for her excellence in performing. Ms. Collins and her students are no strangers to large crowds and grand venues like this. This morning, her students will share two songs with us, both patriotic themes, including This Land is Your Land and You're a Grand Old Flag. Enjoy, enjoy Shady Hill Harmony under the direction of music teacher Sandra Collins at this time.
Thank, Thank you, you C.D. Hill Army. Army. Can, Can we show them our appreciation one more time? time. Something new to our program this year. Thank you. We are sharing inspiration with us this morning from one of our very own veterans, Air Force veteran, Mr. Spencer Doherty, who teaches at Hammock Cohen Junior Elementary School, named for Marion County's only Medal of Honor recipient. Mr. Doherty, if you would please join me at the podium. We'd love to hear your inspiration. How's everybody doing? doing? So before I begin, I would like to recognize all the veterans that have served before, during, and after my service. Uh, and have a ceremony. Oh, and happy birthday to Marines. I guess I will start at the beginning. My service began September 20th, 2010, at the age of 20. I had flunked out of two semesters of college. I was working a different job with no real direction in my life. And I did the only thing that I knew would save me by joining the United States Air Force. I joined as a one charter 7X1 airfield commander. I was in charge of all airfield operations, from the drive-in program to filing flight plans for both American and foreign uh, pilots to wildlife control to overseeing things like snow removal and construction projects. I was a jack of all trades and learning to be a master of some. We had to be able to do six things at once and be able to prioritize based on importance. It was stressful, but I persevered. I made mistakes, I took risks, and I let the Air Force push me to grow into the man I am today. Without it, who knows what may have been done. There is one hard lesson in particular that I think the Air Force taught me that I don't think I realized how much it helped until almost a decade later. As a brand new airman, my first day commander was Todd, a civilian that was a legend in the career and ran his airfield like a top, an unstoppable force. He didn't take excuses for complacency, and he didn't really take no for an answer. A real, his way was the right way to come out. It was frustrating, aggravating. I was a new airman with a chip on my shoulder, annoyed that I was being treated the way I was being treated, still letting my ego control my world. One week, about three months in, I got extremely sick. Had pneumonia for almost 10 days without knowing it, running high fevers every day, and I was on a construction team where I had to watch a crew work on the airfield all day in the cab of the truck, sometimes up to 12 hours, while studying and reading because I was still learning my job. Well, I was late, still very sick, and slept with 10 alarms I had set in order to make it on time because I knew that it would be a challenge. When I pulled up to my detail at about 7.05, the one that started at 06, I knew, I knew I was, I was going, going to get in trouble by my airfield manager for one, being late, late and two, two for getting in shape, which, which is, is no longer a problem because I'm a civilian. Lo and behold, hold, he pulls up an exit about 7.30. Furious. Furious. Mad, Mad as all get out, out that I was an hour late and unkempt. No, no excuses, excuses remember. remember. Well, fast, fast forward our month of month, and it's in the hospital, hospital later, later, where my lungs were found to be about 84% full of pneumonia fluid, pneumonia fluid and I was on death's death door. I got, I got back, back to base, base to find out that the same aerial manager I thought hated me for the first four months of my career, and my first TV station ever, went to bad because I spent the first seven days in the hospital alone, and he was upset. Mad that I had been treated the way I was by my squadron, the hospital on base, 
and everyone in between, wanted, wanted to make, to make sure, sure that I was taken care of and that I was going to make it back safe. safe. The lesson here is simple, simple. Or, or at least the one that I have gleaned from them all these years, years later, later, as I've worked 30, 30 hours, hours a week and forced myself, myself to go to school full time to push myself into teaching college. There are no excuses. There are no mistakes. All we can do is move forward. Learn from our fumbles and treat our fellow humans with grace and respect. Don't expect perfection, but always expect a person's best. Because you should always do your best, even if that day your best is really only 30%. It's what you do to overcome life problems and try to always be better than the day before that makes you who you are. But how does this play into what I do now? How did it lead to me being an educator? How would a lesson like this was benefit me as a teacher? Well, my friends, that is simple. When I was separated from the Air Force, I knew I wasn't going to serve. I knew I immediately wanted to get back into school and get a degree in education. I come from a long line of educators, and so was the only real logical choice. I also knew I wanted to teach elementary school, and I knew I wanted to start in Florida. So I packed up and moved, enrolled in UCF, and worked for my degree while working jobs on the side. I started apprentice teaching at Annabelle and Junior, and immediately I made the right decision. While I was student teaching, I had the unique opportunity to complete my second semester of apprenticeship as a full-time teacher due to the Church and Teachers Program. It gave me a valuable opportunity to learn in my own classroom and put my feet to the fire in a sense. I was able to start to form my own teaching philosophy and to begin becoming comfortable as a teacher. I knew that I put into the room last year that I still had a lot to learn. And I know this year, I still have a lot to learn. But as I begin to walk this new career path, I am taking the lessons from the Air Force, specifically Lee had on that first day they taught me, and I am using them to help my students grow. Not only as a fifth grade math and science teacher, but as I help to grow their social and emotional skills as well. I give my children a chance, teaching them that in math, as well as life, it isn't only about the destination, but about the journey you take to get there, to treat your fellow classmates with respect and compassion. I teach by example, by admitting my mistakes and apologizing when I am wrong. I always give children a chance to admit their own mistakes and learn from them. The same thing that my actual manager taught me in those formative years of my career. Giving them a wide berth to learn and fail or to learn and succeed, but no matter the circumstances, to grow. <laughs> Teaching them the same lessons that I was blessed with early in my career, that if you strive to get 1% better every day, eventually you will look back and no longer recognize your past self. The reason I teach is the same reason that I actually joined the Air Force, to make a difference, even if it's just a single student. If, if I can impress the lessons that were not impressed upon me at that age, and teach my fifth graders to not be so hard on themselves, to learn from their mistakes, and to allow themselves grace, then maybe one or two students will eventually look back upon my lessons and apply them to their future self. Maybe one or two will even join the Air Force. But if I reach one over the course of my time, both current and in the present, or in the future, then I have accomplished my mind. Acts of service is just that. To your community, to your friends, to your family, to yourself. If the Air Force taught me anything, if my life leading up to this point has taught me anything, it's that I know the difference I make in this life is all that I have in the end. And for now, that difference is serving as a very county educator Attempting to reach children one, one lesson at a time. Thank you. Well done, Mr. Jordi Novan. Thank you for your service to our country and to our students.
Are any of Mr. Jordan's students here today? Back there, yes, we salute you. Heroes we have realized are among us today. They left families, children, and spouses behind to answer the call. A call to serve their country above self. A call we must remember and continue to honor. At this time, the Howard Middle School Symphonic Band, under the direction of Mrs. Britton Schofield, presents an Armed Forces medley salute as a musical tribute to our veterans. Veterans, listen up. As you hear the familiar tune of the military branch in this performance, we hope you will stand so we can acknowledge and honor you, your service to protect our freedom around the world. The order of the performance is Army, Navy, Marine, Air Force, Coast. with local, local veteran groups to ask if we should make today a holiday. With a resounding no, our veterans said they wanted students in class to learn, participate, and appreciate our armed forces. Otherwise, students might spend their day sleeping in, visiting the mall, or maybe enjoying a day like today at the beach. Regardless, 
There would be little if any connection to that at all. Fortunately, here in Marion County, we thank our veterans year-round for the roles they play in the lives of our students, including our Tom veterans. Words mean so much when shared with others, be they lyrics to a song, lines in a poem, parts of a sentence, or merely clusters of letters on a page. Words impact us in profound ways, especially when offered by children. Today, we have two students who will share their own patriotic inspired essays with us. They both attend Hamlet Owen Jr. Elementary, named for Marion County's only Medal of Honor recipient. His story is posted in this part at the top of that hill. I encourage you to visit it sometime today. Just look for the eagle at the top of the hill, and you will find that story. Please welcome Dandela, Ray, and Alana Wynn to share their winning student essays. Thank you, Daniel. Hello, 
Thank you once again, Forest High School. Boys and girls, keep your eyes and ears posted to the sky. That's all you could happen at any moment. Meantime, in 1921, an unknown World War I American soldier was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. This site on the hillside overlooking the Potomac River in the city of Washington, D.C., is now the focal point of reference for America's veterans. At the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month each year, a combined color guard representing all military branches executes, presents arms at the tomb. The nation's tribute to its fallen servicemen and women is symbolized by the light of our presidential wreath, followed by a jubilant rendition of tax. Military gun salutes memorialize our nation's fallen heroes in a disturbing yet powerful way. The firing of three rifle rounds over the graves of fallen armed forces, armed forces members and political leaders could be traced to Europe, where fighting was halted to remove the dead and wounded. Once an area was cleared of casualties, three rounds were fired into the air as a signal to resume the fight. The United States fired a one-gun national salute on special occasions and during times of mourning for each state of the Union until 1841, that's when the salute was standardized at 21 guns. It's generally believed that gun salutes are set off in odd numbers because of an old naval superstition that even numbers are unlucky. Today, our gun salute is offered by the Ocala Police Department's rifle squad. We thank them for their contributions to our program. And a word of caution here, our gun salute will be loud, followed by a special cannon salute. Both will likely start our you, so just a heads up for that. In 1874, TAPS became the official army duty call. It's believed the first time TAPS was used for funeral service was for a cannoneer killed in action on a Virginia battlefield. The, the commander substituted TAPS for the traditional three rifle shots fired over the brave and fallen soldiers because he did not want to give away his military position to the nearby enemy. And I'm going to pause on a moment because I believe I'm going to fly over here to the The salute will be followed by Howard Middle School, Susana Bands, Valerie Lou, and Christopher Navadiana performing taps. First, though, representatives of Army Specialist Robert E. Blair will present a wreath in his honor. Blair is a Lakeboro High School graduate who died in combat on May 25, 2006, while serving in Operation Iraqi Freedom. This wreath also honors all men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom, including Marky Sims, whose family is also with us today and will be part of the reclaiming tradition. They are escorted by Staff Sergeant Jason Rogers with the Army Recruiting Station here in Ocala. Out of respect, I would ask everyone to stand. And for our military mindsets here, attention! Salute!
This time sharing a familiar composition entitled America, the Beautiful. Some way. For example, 
Did you know that Sally had a military battleship named after her in World War II? Or the Greenfield Aviation School was located in a strategic target area in Ocala. We encourage you to stop by and check out the rich heritage the center has when it comes to local military service. Volunteer staff the park office, many of you sell our veterans. And this park was rededicated in 2005 and continues to be a treasure in our community, providing many opportunities to inform and educate all of us about the armed forces and the men and women who serve. The park features the Medal of Honor Monument, the Presidential Monument, honoring all presidents who served in our military, war memorabilia, and picnic areas. And the park serves as a tangible history lesson etched in brick and granite. It starts with the Indian Wars in 1628 and continues to the present. Please welcome the chairman and the friends of Marion County Veterans Park, Mr. Ron Oakleyberg, who wants to share a big surprise with all of us here this morning. And with him is Mr. Jeffrey Askey, who serves as the Marion County Veterans Services Director and is himself a 22-year veteran of the United States Navy. Jump up.
We're looking for the other two. They're beautiful. We think this is Jordan. You ought to see the other. Gold store mother, etc. Thank you all. Well, I wanted to wait to almost finish our ceremony today. Thank you, Team Town. Thank you, Mary County Veterans Park. Congratulations. Well done. One can put thousands to flight, but two, ten thousand. There is strength in numbers, and that's why we are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are united as Americans forever. Thank you for honoring our veterans today. Students, thank you for showing your respect, admiration, and appreciation to our veterans. Students, this direction is for you. Please remain where you are until your teacher or your chaperone comes to get you to get you to the bus. Okay, that's for everyone's sake. On behalf of our school board members, Superintendent Fakagawa, our 7,000 employees, and 45,500 students, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. May God continue to bless this great country of ours, the United States of America. Have a wonderful day.